everyone, it's Sylvia from Aussie Scrapper and today I'm participating in my very first Crafty Maven getaway. I have chosen to go with the mood board and I will be using the suggested colours that they have there, the currently the currently the corally colour, the sort of teal colour as well as the pink colour. I'm going to be using a die cut that I bought from the Silhouette store and it's called The Heart Reef and it's by Paige Evans. The photo I will be using is of my mother-in-law and she is holding my baby girl asleep in her lap. I'm just going through my paper scraps and I'm looking for any of the colours that are in the mood board because at this stage my idea is to back all those love hearts in all the colours from the mood board but somewhere along the line that changes and I do land up backing all the love hearts but I do use all shades of pink or all tones of pink and any patterned paper that had pink in it it might have been pink pink and white or different shades of pink but if it was predominantly pink it got used the whole process of backing your cut file with different papers is time consuming I will not lie but I do enjoy it, it was very relaxing and I just did it in front of the TV. So as you see, I'm just tracing the outline of the heart, then I fussy cut it out and just glue it down. Don't worry, I haven't recorded the whole process for you, just enough to give you an idea of what to do. Abracadabra, and here it is, all done. So off camera, I just matted my photo with some scrap paper. I'm just distressing the edges of the paper using my scissors. I do have a distressing tool but I have no idea where it is. It seems to have disappeared in the black hole that is my scrapbooking room. So I'm just showing you a close-up of what it looks like when you distress the edges and I do that to all four sides but I don't show you that on camera. All four sides have been distressed and I'm going to be inking them with some Fabrico ink and in the colour Autumn Leaf. Now I must admit that this ink has been in my stash for a very long time. I like the colour but I do not know if it still exists. I don't even know if they still make this brand. I love the texture that you get when you distress your paper and then just ink all around it. It is a personal choice, but I do believe that it draws your eye to the photo. I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but I really do struggle with layers. I love the look of layers on photos, but for some reason, it just does not come naturally to me. I'm now trying to incorporate some of that teal colour that's in the mood board. So I had this scrap of paper that was there in my stash, and I... Just used my paper trimmer to cut it out a bit neater and then I had this card that I thought I would never use and I'm just going to use it on the other, other corner. So this is another layout that I've made using just mainly scrap papers. I tried so hard to get a doily onto this layout but it just was not going to work. I am so excited to be finally using the paper that you see now. It's been in my stash for a little while and it has a little bit of a story to it. This paper my son made for me. One day I just decided to give him a piece of scrap cardstock that I had and some inks and I just let him play and that's what he came up with. So you just see me use an old ruler that's been in my stash forever and I'm just using it to tear along the paper just to give it more of that rough edge just like my previous layers. Just like in the previous layers I am using the Autumn Leaf Colour Fabrico ink to ink all four sides. It's at this point that I realise I don't have a lot of that coral colour that's in the mood board so I try to rectify that and I go to my paper stash and I pull out anything that I sort of think matches that colour range. In the end, I land up choosing the darker orangey colour, that one just there. I just thought it made everything else pop. So 
So I thought I would see what it would look like with some vellum, but I wasn't happy with the vellum. I decided that it needed more texture. And in my stash, I had this piece of tissue paper. I really like how the tissue paper looks against the layers. So I'm just going to get my tape runner, put some adhesive down, and I'm just gathering the tissue just like you would if you were trying to make some pleats or if you were making a skirt with pleats, that is. Sorry guys, I just can't seem to explain the proper technique of what that's called. But anyway, I just cut another piece there and just attaching it and it's just sticking onto the, the tape runner that I put down. I then go and just trim it all down and I quite like that added texture that it gave there and I do exactly the same thing to the other side. Here's a close-up of what I'm doing as I really cannot explain it and as you can see I'm just gathering or pleating the tissue paper and sticking it onto the, the tape that I put down earlier. Yeah. So no way, just gather it, pleat it, whatever you want to call it and it's done. Then you just get your scissors and trim it down and it gives it a little pleated look. I've had this word love in my stash for quite a while and it's going to be used on this layout. It incorporates all the colours that are in the mood board. So all I'm doing is just fussy cutting each individual letter. Once all the letters are cut out, I just glue them down to some tealy blue cardstock. And then I fussy cut them all out once again, but I give it a bit of a border. I do pull out my little box of trinkets to see if there's any embellishments I can add to the layout. But in the end, I decide that because the cut file is so busy, that it doesn't really need a lot of embellishments. In the bottom right hand corner, I did use a word sticker that says so lovely and I did colour it in with some antique linen distress oxides just to tie it into the layout a bit more as I didn't like it so white. I found a sticker word that read beautiful so I mounted that onto some cardstock, cut it out, gave it a fishtail on both ends and so my title is going to read Beautiful Love. Off camera I stuck the word love onto the photo as there was a bit of dead space there and I'm now just adding some fun foam to the L and the O. So here's the beautiful sticker that I was talking about earlier and I've also added some fun foam to the back of that. From my stash I also pulled out this bit of ribbon that was left sitting there and I just added it to the top and the bottom of those photo layers. Or should I say paper layers? As I was going through my stash of ribbons I found this, oh I don't know how to describe it, it's, um, it's not material, it's like a plasticky... Uh, to me, it's a, like sequence on a roll. That's the only way I can explain it, but it is little flowers. And originally, I was going to, I wanted it to go cascading down the page, but that really was not going to work. My next thought is, oh, I'll add some stenciling. So I get out this Tim Holtz stencil that's got like little circles all over it, and I just randomly add some texture paste. But no, I do not like it. My next thought is to get some gesso and then add some water to it, mix it, and I'm going to add some splatters. But my original splatters were too thick and I ruined my page for the second time, so no problems. I flipped it over and watered down my gesso just a little bit more and that was just perfect. So there I go on my little merry way adding lots and lots of white splatters. Off camera I stuck everything down and now I'm being very stubborn as I really want to use this roll of plastic little flowers. And here's a close up of what those lovely flowers look like. Then I decide, oh, I'm going to cut them and use them like sequins. So I get some of my glue dots and I'm just putting a glue dot to each of the little flowers as I cut them out and then just stick them randomly onto the page. And I really like how that looks. There was something missing on this layout and that's when I decided I was going to add some stitching. 
So I went and I got my embroidery threads out and I picked one that's sort of a tealy greeny colour. And then with my piercing tool, I just pierced a whole lot of holes on those circles that are on the die cut. And then I'm going to add some backstitching. For backstitch, just put your needle through the first hole at the back there. And then you've got your thread there. You go into the second hole, push down, then go back to the back of the paper. And into the third hole and push the needle through. And then you go back. To the second hole so you're going backwards does that make sense then you just go next to the next hole and then back through the other one the previous one and you just keep doing that till you're all done and that is back stitch and that's what it looks like so I think I show it a few more times and then you'll just see the end product so a big thank you to everyone that has subscribed. I really, really, really do appreciate it. And till next time, stay safe and God bless. I've just included some close-ups for you, so enjoy. And there's all that backstitching. Bye.